Um, so, why did I mention these two, uh, two uh, applications? Because I think they are much more sophisticated than usual online dating. I mean, the online dating in a way belongs to the 90s, it's actually very passé. The new applications are much more sophisticated and much more faster. And uh, what I would say is that, uh, that's my first one, kind of my first proposition today, is that uh, in today's permissive Western societies, what is prevailing uh, is precisely this sort of easiness or to paraphrase Kundera, the unbearable lightness of sexual intercourse. So what is missing is not the possibility of sex so much, because it's very easy to, to find it today, and you can use an application uh, as well, or you can do it in any other way, but what is missing today, and that's the reason why the title of the lecture is uh, Radicality of Love, uh, what is missing today I think is not so much sex, I think it's the easiest thing today to do, but the most difficult, most radical thing to do, or to create, or to find, and then to reinvent again from the beginning and the beginning, following Rimbaud's credo, love has to be reinvented, is precisely love. Um, and to come back to my starting point, uh, what I announced, announced at the beginning, uh, in late capitalism this is even more the case, because of new technological developments, uh, and uh, this is the reason why I think that the work of Eva Luz is uh, important uh, because uh, in her books, in several books and hopefully also in, the, in her lecture after this lecture, uh, she, she showed that uh, uh, the transformation of emotions today, and emotions really transformed in a way compared to different centuries, other centuries, is directly linked to the transformation of capitalism. And this brings us back actually to Christopher Lesch and his classical book, The Culture of Narcissism, published in 1979, uh, where he actually uh, uh, made an analysis how late capitalism uh, turned narcissism into pathological narcissism. I mean, we don't want to go here now in Freud's definition of primary and secondary narcissism, it would bring us too far. Uh, but not every narcissism, of course, is pathological. Uh, but what Christopher Lesch showed is actually that capitalism, in a way, uh, brought us to a phase where narcissism became a new sort of illness. Um, as you probably know, or you can find out, uh, Christopher Lesch uh, examined uh, the American culture mainly. And what's interesting is actually that uh, he didn't uh, uh, come to his thesis about narcissism uh, following uh, uh, capitalism as such, but he actually followed the counterculture country in US. Uh, so he started with Weather Underground with 68 uh, in US, and he said actually that uh, the utopian visions of the 60s ended up in the lifestyles of the 70s. And we will soon come back to, to, to the digital uh, revolution as well and to narcissism today. Uh, the, the quote by Christopher Lesch, Lesch says, After the political turmoil of the 60s, Americans have retreated to purely personal preoccupations. Having no hope of impro improving their lives in any of the ways that matter, 68, revolution and so on, change in capitalism, People have convinced themselves that... So she says, when we fall in love, we start by loving a beautiful body, usually the body of a young man. And then the lover is going to discover that this young body is not unique. Indeed, there are many other people, with many young people with a beautiful body. And um, after that, the lover is going to recognize that those many bodies um, cannot satisfy us. So the body itself does not satisfy us, so we're going to love the soul. And after we love the soul, then we realize that um, the next step is to love all the beautiful souls. And not only to love all the beautiful souls, but to love 
all the source of their existence. And what makes the soul beautiful? What is the source of the beautiful soul? Well, it is a harmonious social order. When you grow up in a good society, you grow up with good parents, you are going to have a beautiful soul. Therefore, she says, after we love the beautiful soul, we're going to love the source of the beautiful law and soul, and so which means we're going to love the beautiful or the good institution. That the good institution, the school, the politics, the state. And after that, we are going to love, in fact, we are going to come to an understanding that what we should love is um, truth itself. The truth itself that we are going to discover through these good institutions. The beauty of laws and the, of laws and the beauty of institutions is what we discover. And what we and ultimately the very last step after we discover the beauty of knowledge is the beauty itself. What we fall in love with ultimately is beauty itself and the truth as it manifests itself through beauty. So this is a story, again, that I'm approaching not as a philosopher. There's endless uh, writing about this um, as a, uh, from a philosophical standpoint. What I am interested in here as a cultural sociologist is how different this story of love is, uh, or this model of love is, is from what would come to dominate later on Western culture. And very quickly, I will say very quickly, what strikes me as being very different from the model of love that follows is one that you see that at the center of, um, I would say, the erotic pulsion, before the erotic pulsion, there is what I would call an epistemic pulsion. That is, what drives the lover is the desire to know much more than the desire to love. So, so the desire to know is prior to the desire to love or to the sexual desire itself. So this is an epistemic uh, model of love as the desire to know something that is beyond the self, that is beyond the immediate reality of the senses, that is beyond the immediate reality of the body of the beloved. So in this model, you can see also that uh, there could not be Fetchko, there could not be at all the possibility of a love at first sight. Because on the contrary, in this model, the first love, I would say, is definitely, the, or the, the, both the first love and the love at first sight are the weakest. The totally the weakest at the total bottom of the hierarchy of